Hmm. 24 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 40 millimeter, 24 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 40 millimeter. Yeah, I guess I'll just get all of them. No! Bad idea. You think buying all these lenses helps me take better photos? I mean, I guess to some extent, but they're practically paperweights at this point. I spent all my money on lenses and now I have to live off of instant noodles. If you have no idea what focal length you want, or just tired of watching video after video of these three lenses, or maybe you just want to learn about what to look for in a lens, focal length, aperture, versatility, motor types, then this video is for you. This video is going to cover everything I wish someone had taught me before I went out and bought all three of these lenses. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Josh Winiarski, and I'm a photographer, filmmaker, vlogger, and you know, I do the occasional live stream here on YouTube as well as Instagram. And today, we're gonna be comparing the 24 millimeter, the 40 millimeter, and the 50 millimeter prime lenses made by Canon. Now, this trio of lenses has a lot of similarities, but also a lot of differences. So today, we're gonna be deep diving into a bunch of different features to help you decide which lens is right for you. Sorry if this turns into a long video, but it should be really, really helpful. With that out of the way, let's get right into our first feature, which is the overall build quality of each lens. Now, way back when, a little bit of a history lesson, the 50 millimeter was made entirely out of plastic. In fact, it was made so cheaply, it was commonly called the Plastic Fantastic. But don't let that deter you, it was still a good lens, and nowadays, the most recent model, the 50mm STM, is a totally different story. The 50mm STM is built out of a much more acceptable feeling plastic, and instead of a plastic mount on the back, you've got a metal mount, so it's not going to go snapping off the front of your camera. Similarly, the 24 and the 40mm also have metal mounts, but I will say the plastic on them is a little bit more durable feeling. Don't let their small size fool you, these things are built pretty dang well. The 24mm and the 40mm are both pancake lenses, and at a first glance I can never tell them apart. Which pro tip for you is why I always write the focal length of my lenses on the lens cap so when they're in my camera bag I can just see what I want and pull it out without getting the wrong lens. All of that being said, I don't think you should let the build quality determine which lens you go with. They're all built well, not great, there's no weather ceiling, but well, they're durable. Through everyday use, they're going to hold up just fine. The one thing that is worth considering though, is the 24 and 40 are both pancake lenses. And they're called that because they're super thin, then they kind of look like a pancake. So why does this matter? Well, these are pretty much, no, not pretty much, these are the smallest lenses you can buy for any Canon DSLR. Now, for me personally, when they're actually on the camera, this doesn't matter much at all, but ho, ho, when you're not using the lenses, it's insanely helpful. As your collection of gear grows, eventually you get to the point where you can't take everything you own. It's not all gonna fit in your bag, you're not gonna bring two bags, you can only carry a set amount of gear. I can safely say these are the only two lenses that I've been able to throw in my bag and never ever have to think twice about carrying. For comparison, the 24 millimeter is literally like a third the size of something like a 55 to 250 millimeter, and you can put them in the lens hood of another lens, you can stack them up in a column. Heck, I can even stuff them in the front pocket of my jeans if I really want to. And just to get this out of the way, yes, I did try putting a 50 millimeter in the pocket of my jeans. It's possible, but I wouldn't recommend it. In terms of durability, I'd say it's a pretty close race, but in terms of Portability, the 24 and 40 millimeter pull ahead, making those my favorite lens in terms of overall build quality, with the 50 millimeter just a little bit behind. Now, it's worth noting that the 50 millimeter is a small lens, but it just doesn't compare to the convenience of the 24 and 40 millimeter. It's not bad by any means, it's just not quite as good. Moving on, let's talk aperture. Aperture controls how much light is let into the lens, affecting things like low light performance, how fast you can make that shutter speed, and your depth of field, or how blurry the background gets. Now the 24 and 40 millimeter are once again neck and neck, both having an f2.8 aperture. This is pretty much accepted as a fast aperture, and is commonly found on pro lenses, costing many times more. It's pretty good for low light and does an excellent job isolating a subject and helping it pop away from the background. However, that's nothing compared to the 50mm f1.8's 
aperture. I mean, when you're shooting at f1.8, this thing sucks in light like a ShamWow sucks in water. Now, 1.8 and 2.8 might not sound all that different, but this actually lets in a little bit more than twice as much light as an f2.8. So if you were shooting on the 40 or 24 millimeter, you might need ISO 3200 to get the proper exposure. On this lens, you would only need 1600, which is actually super nice for keeping noise down in your images. There's really only a handful of lenses that can get an f1.8 aperture or lower, and this is one of them, and it's definitely the most affordable. It's better in low light, can separate the subject even more from the background, isolating it, giving you that blurry delicious bokeh that everyone loves. In terms of aperture, this thing is an absolute beast and blows the other two out of the water. And even if you don't want to use the 1.8 aperture, remember you can always stop down to 2.8, 4, whatever tickles your fancy. Now let's talk focal length. So 24, 40, and 50 millimeters might not sound all that different, but they are. So 24 millimeters is very much a wide focal length, which makes it extremely versatile. Versatile? I don't know. You can use it for landscapes, street photography, even portraits if needed. What I like about it is it's the most versatile because it captures the widest image. You can always move closer, but sometimes it's harder to move farther away if there's a wall or something behind you. So that's super convenient if you're looking for a more versatile lens. Moving to the 50 millimeter, it's a totally different ball game. The 50 millimeter really isn't that good for landscapes, but if you're interested in shooting portraits, this is gonna do a much better job of isolating your subject. You're gonna include less of the background, and because it's 50 millimeters, you get a little bit more compression, meaning you get a little bit more blurry of a background, helping your subject pop up even more, even if you're shooting at f2.8. If you're interested in focusing more on single subjects, instead of trying to capture everything, the 50 millimeter is the best of the bunch. Now, if your name is Goldilocks and neither of those really appeal to you, there's the 40 millimeter, which sits comfortably in between. It's not quite as good for portraits and isolation as the 50 millimeter, and it's not quite as wide as the 24 for landscapes or urban photography, but it sits happily in the middle. It can be a little more handy than the 24 if you're doing street photography or portraits, so you don't have to get right up in someone's grill. And it can also be helpful if you're taking portraits and a little bit of a tight space, so you don't have to get way back against the wall with your camera it might come in handy. Now, one of the cool things about the 24 millimeter was it was wide, it included a lot of detail, and in theory, you could always crop it in post at the cost of some resolution. The 40 millimeter, if something is far away, you can still crop in, but you won't have to do it as much, so you can maintain a little bit higher resolution. Now, unfortunately, it's kind of obvious, there's not a clear winner in this category. Focal length is very objective and subject dependent, but here's what I will say. If your priority is wide shots, groups of people, maybe architecture, landscapes, the 24 millimeter is probably the best lens for you. On top of that, it can do other things because if you shoot wide, you can always crop in. If you shoot tight, you can't crop out and post because that was never included in your image. So if you're looking for a lens that can shoot wide and want a little bit of versatility, the 24 millimeter is probably your best bet. On the other hand, if you're like, hey, I don't really care about getting wide shots, or maybe you already have a lens for that, then something like the 40 millimeter can be awesome. When I know I won't need wide shots, the 40 millimeter gets me a little bit longer of a focal length, which gets you more compression, helps you isolate a subject, and is just awesome for walking around taking shots, and on top of that, it has that extra reach, so I don't have to get right up in someone's face to take a picture of them. And lastly, if portraits or events are my main concern, I know I'm not gonna be shooting wide, I wanna isolate my subject, I want a little bit of range, the 50 millimeter is my go-to. Having that extra range is awesome for popping shots off from a little bit of a distance, but remember, if you're using the 50 millimeter, you're not gonna be able to take pictures of buildings, it's gonna be tough to get pictures of landscapes, but that shouldn't be your priority if you're going with the 50 millimeter. So when you're looking at these different focal lengths, think about what lenses you're gonna be pairing it with and see which lens will complement it best. For instance, let's say the only lens you have is a 14 millimeter. Definitely a very weird only lens to have, but hear me out. So if you've got a 14 millimeter, the 24 millimeter isn't super appealing. You've already got your wide end covered. It wouldn't make sense to carry both of those lenses. So let's just say I was going on a hike, I wanted to shoot landscapes, I wanted to take pictures of the people I was hiking with. 
I could use the 14 millimeter to capture vast landscapes, beautiful mountains, and then I'd want to pair it with something like a 40 millimeter, a 50 millimeter to get nice pictures of the people I'm with. Or on the other end of the spectrum, maybe I only have a telephoto lens. Well, then that 24 millimeter is super appealing. This only goes down to 55 millimeter. Can't capture many landscapes with that, but the 24 millimeter is gonna help me shoot nice and wide. So as you can see, those would make a much better pair. If I've got this that goes to 55 millimeters and this that goes to 50 millimeters, it might not quite cover as much as I'd like, although you do get the faster aperture. Now, this sort of falls under the focal length category, but something really important that you need to think about are the macro capabilities of each lens. Now, what the heck is macro? Well, put simply, it's your ability to take very close up images of a subject. You see, different lenses have a different minimum focusing distance. So this might be counterintuitive, but the 24 millimeter can actually get the closest macro shots of a subject, while the 50 millimeter, which has more range, which is more zoomed in, is actually the worst lens at macro photography, and the 40 millimeter is once again comfortably in the middle. It's a little bit counterintuitive, I know, but here's a shot from each lens showing how close it can get to a subject. So here's the 24 millimeter and here's the 50 millimeter. So if you wanna take pictures of something small, maybe bugs, maybe you want detail shots of a wedding ring, the 24 millimeter is gonna be the best, well the 50 millimeter is gonna be the worst. Now, there's a decent shot right about now. You're thinking, this guy's just piled an avalanche of information on me and now I'm more confused and conflicted than ever. So let's break it down real quick. The number one question, the first question, the most important question you should always ask when looking at lenses is why are you buying this lens? Or in this case, why are you considering these three lenses? Even if you think you're gonna be doing a couple different things, you should have some specific idea of what caused you to want to buy a new lens. Remember that no lens is gonna do everything, so buy a lens with a specific intent Think, how is this lens going to fit into your arsenal? How is it going to help you be a better photographer? If you want the best low light, you want the best portraits, you want to isolate subjects, then the 50 millimeter is very likely your best option. If you're looking for a lens for landscapes, don't buy this. But if portraits are high up there on your priority, or you want to just isolate things, you want a shallow depth of field, you want to be able to take pictures in a less lit environment, the 50 millimeter. Think 50 millimeter. If you want good low light, not insanely good, but good, you wanna get some wide shots, or maybe you wanna get some macro shots, or you just want something that won't take up much space, the 24 millimeter is a really, really good option. You can always crop in a little bit at the cost of resolution. You can take pictures of a lot of people. You can do a little bit of portrait work, not a ton, won't be as good as the 40, won't be as good as the 50, but you can do a little bit. If this sounds enticing to you, then the 24 is probably your best bet. So where does the 40 millimeter fit in? Well, it's the median, and that actually makes it kind of in a weird spot. I was just telling you how you should buy a lens with specific intent. You should think how it's gonna complement the other lenses you have or plan on getting, but the 40 millimeter is really more of a general purpose lens. You've got that compact, awesome size of the 24 millimeter, but it's not as good for landscapes. You've almost got the reach of the 50 millimeter, but it's not quite as good for portraits. And full transparency, it's the lens I use the least because a lot of my lenses already creep a little bit past 40 millimeters in one direction, so I don't really feel like I need to carry it on me very often. But just because it isn't the right lens for me doesn't mean I don't enjoy using it sometimes. For me, it's the lens I toss in my bag for casual use. If I'm going out, taking photos with people, I'm not too picky about composition. It's small, it's lightweight, I can just capture memories with it. It takes good portraits, not great portraits. It can sometimes work for landscapes, but it's not meant for landscapes. It's fast, it's lightweight, it's small and discreet, it's not a bad option. If you're traveling or doing a lot of walking around, I kind of think of it as like the phone equivalent of a lens. It's definitely tighter, you don't get as much in frame as you would with a phone, but I kind of use it in the same way. 
If I just want something super casual, super light, that's when I find I personally reach for this lens the most. It's also important to remember that regardless of which lens you go with, you're getting a really solid piece of kit. They've all got respectable build quality. They're all made by Canon. They've got that Canon STM motor. They all focus at about the same volume. They've got very similar focus speeds. There might be minor differences, but when I was just testing it around my room, I couldn't really tell a noticeable difference. They're all pretty sharp. They all have pretty fast apertures. It's really just gonna come down to what you're looking to do in photography or videography right now. What gaps can you fill? What do you wanna do with one of these lenses? One last thing to consider is the 24 millimeter is an EFS lens, meaning it's only gonna work on crop sensor cameras. An ADD, a, uh, a Canon T6, while a 40 and 50 millimeter are EF lenses, meaning they'll work on crop sensor as well as full frame cameras. Now my current camera is a Canon 80D. My favorite two lenses of the bunch are the 24 millimeter and the 50 millimeter. If you get both these lenses, I wouldn't really bother with the 40 millimeter. But that being said, if you are looking for a little bit more of an all arounder, the 40 millimeter could be your best bet. Anyways, that's it for me. I really hope this video helped you out. If you have any more questions, be sure to hit up that comment section down below. I'm pretty responsive. I think I thought of everything, but if I didn't, I'll upvote your comment. I might even pin it so everyone else can see. As always, if you like the video, be sure to like it. If you have any questions, have any comments, hit up that comment section down below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again for watching. My name's Josh Winiarski. Check me out on Instagram and I'll see you all in the next one.